Okay, let's turn to page 174 in your course back. And let's get ready for the big time and kind of add just some things you might do actually to, to really have a robust model for yourself. All right, so we're going to add to what we've been doing before the variable female. Now, the question is, is the female categorical or, or, or um, quantitative? Well, I hope that you said categorical because we have one for females and zero for otherwise. And so for rats, there's only males and females. X2, remember, is a quantitative variable. And X1 is if you had the treatment zero, if you didn't. So if we add that in, we have two categorical variables and one quantitative. It doesn't make sense to square the categorical data. So we just only have one squared, and that's the X squared, X2 squared and then the x2. And so if you just kind of think about it that way, so how could we mix and match, like when we did the one-way ANOVA, females and treatment? Well, we could have the treatment female and then the interaction terms treatment female. Treatment, female, interaction. Treatment, females, interaction. So that's how we could set it up. And so this means that we'll have 11 uh, actually, 12 coefficients up to beta 11. Everybody gets beta naught, but um, up to beta 11. All right, so this is our full model. And what we want to do is say, can we get rid of x1, x2, and x3? So, so we have to figure out, well, we can get one here, x2 times x1, x3, and then x2 squared times x1, 3. So we're saying that beta 7 or beta 11 is 0 or any interaction between treatment and time is gender independent. We could also say that any interaction between treat, treatment and gender is time independent. Basically, we want to get all three of them together. So our reduced model would be this without beta 7 and without beta 11. All right, so let's go ahead and move to mini tabs and see how we might do that. Well, uh, we need a squared term. So I went ahead in the calculator and, and did the squared. And so remember, we're going to do the log ratio. That's not a statistical term. That's just what we have for um, this particular part. So I have log ratio. I've got time. I've got time squared treatment in female. But I need interaction terms. So I'm going to go to the model and go ahead and I'll just show you how you could get all this stuff. Let me just start over again. So I've got time, time squared. What I do is I highlight all four of them, and I'm going to want all interactions up to order three, okay? Because I need an x1, x2, x3. So then I'm going to hit add, and I'm just going to have to go through these and see which ones I don't need. Well, I can't, I'm not really caring about a time cubed. I do need time treatment, time fe female, time squared, time squared type female, treatment times female. I don't need a time cubed or a time cube, so I feel, but then I've got time treatment female and time squared treatment female. So all together, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's good. The eight, eleven variables for the eleven um, beta eleven that I have. And so let's go ahead and calculate that. I just want to show you that something interesting about this is that up here at the top it says it cannot. Uh, be evaluated time squared times female and time squared is treatment time female. That's going to mess up a little bit of our partial F test, but that's just because there weren't enough data variables to do this. So that's where things are going to get a little um, out of whack for us from what we've done before. So here I've got, I'm going to copy uh, as picture this analysis of variance part. So I want to do that. That's my full model there. And I should actually do while I'm here some residual analysis. Kept meaning to do that. So for grass, we'll do a four and one. Oh, maybe I already did. Maybe I already did that. Yeah. Oh, I did it. Okay, good. It kind of looks okay. We should probably do a normal probability plot residuals they don't really look that bad so we can go ahead now let's do a reduced model okay so a reduced model will be stat regression regression and i want to forget fit that regression model so 
what I'm doing is I'm taking out the time treatment female. Do I see another? Oh, these two at the bottom. And I'm going to run my model here. And again, when I run this model, I'm going to get the same thing. I can't calculate time squared female. That's going to kind of mess up our degrees of freedom, what we've been saying before. But we'll just go ahead and go with it. And so here's my analysis of variance. I'm going to copy this over so I can do some calculations on the um, on this thing. All right, so let's see. So my reduced model is to the right, and what I get is 9.612, 25 degrees of freedom in the air, and on my full model on the left, I get 7.62. And 24 degrees of freedom, like I said, normally we'd have two degrees of freedom, but because um, of those two variables that we're going to calculate is not included. So 3.618, and I think I calculated that, I got 0.6345. And if I went ahead and calculated the F statistic for that, it turns out with one degree of freedom, 24.6345 as my um, cutoff point. I get a p-value of 0.335. And so I fail to reject, which in some sense is good because what that means is that for my alternative hypothesis, I don't need these two terms, and I've got this reduced model with no three terms in here. Okay, But I've got another interaction terms. There's no interaction between treatment and time. And then see if that, if I can reduce that a little bit further as well. Okay, so 